Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to Neurodiversity, Empowering Learning and Employment. We're on Real 9. Can't believe we're on Real 9 already. And this is really asking uh, Lou's advice for reasonable adjustments. This is uh, a total collaboration between Cognacist and FE News. So my name is Gavin O'Mara from, from FE News and I'm joined by Dr. Louise Kowalski. Um, and we've built, haven't we, on trying to live by our values, to chunk up the information and, and build around how we can support learners, but also employers with their employees. Um, reasonable adjustments, massive topic. Got to try to, to chunk this into a real loo, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but um, what are some good examples you've seen uh, for reasonable adjustments for neurodiverse learners, but also for neurodiverse employees. So I'm going to start by defining what reasonable adjustments are, because it's it's complicated. It really is. You know, there's tribunals on this matter um, very frequently because people have to debate what is reasonable. So under the Equality Act 2010, reasonable adjustments are defined as the means taken to reduce or remove a substantial disadvantage that a person may face due to their disability. And as we learned in a previous episode, neurodiversity sits under this umbrella of disability, whether or not the individual considers themselves as disabled. OK, what makes an adjustment reasonable? There's debates around this all the time. There's no set definition. So it'd be really easy to actually consider three things to make this more simple, okay? So, will the adjustment remove or reduce the disadvantage for that person? Is the adjustment practical to make? And is the adjustment affordable? And if the answer to these is yes, that it's likely that you could consider this as a reasonable adjustment and it should be implemented. So that's a quick little trick that organizations can employ. Um, in terms of the workplace, I thought it'd be useful to, to talk about some global workplace adjustments that can be employed. Um, so these are adjustments that you should already have in place or be looking to implement to ensure that you are inclusive across the organization for all your employees. So you could look at flexible working practices. OK, maybe differing hours, differing days, um, but certainly flexibility needs to be incorporated. Workplace mentors is a really powerful one. You know, a great, a great way to to improve efficiency and support is by pairing people together. And that might be, you know, people across different teams or it might be um, maybe somebody who has been in that workplace for a long time with a newbie for example, maybe it could be two people with the same diagnosis so they can learn strategies from each other. On that note as well, it's a really great idea to start thinking about building communities within your organization. Um, so that could be for all types of groups, um, but basically getting that conversation going um, and elevating that culture of inclusivity. Really easy one you can employ is keep your company comms short and concise and succinct. So similar to what we have been doing today, Gavin, and throughout the last couple of months, we're keeping information really chunked up um, and easily to e more easy to remember and digest. Consider your lighting. You know, the worst thing is awful, isn't it? When you walk into a, a building and everything is brightly lit because that really doesn't sit well with everyone for a sustained amount of time. So have the ability to have, you know, if you don't have dimmer lights, then have different rooms with different lighting and lamps and lots of natural lighting where possible. Sound, consider sound. Sound can be overstimulating for a lot of neurodiversities. Um, so provide things like noise cancelling headphones as a matter of course for anybody who needs it. You know, this is a really cheap and simple technique to, to solve that. Thinking about um, assistive technology now, it's so powerful, assistive technology, and it's not a rarity nowadays, and it's not expensive. You know, look at a a, a standard mobile phone, you get lots of free apps nowadays that support um, your access to information in different ways. Text-to-speech, for example. Text-to-speech is great in supporting um, challenges with reading or even just 
looking at a screen, if someone struggles to read something from a screen, it's much easier for them to listen to something. So apps like that make a great job of converting text into speech. Mind mapping is another great one to explore, both for the workplace and in learning. Mind mapping is such an easy technique. You don't need training on it. You don't need to do research on it. You can just pick it up and run with it. Um, and it essentially allows you to convert thoughts into a diagram, a flowchart, a picture, a visual document. And it supports working fluidly, but also with structure. So it can help you with your note taking, planning, organizing. Really great if your head is just full of information and you need to get it out onto a page to help make sense of it. Note taking software, fantastic. And voice recording as well. You know, every phone has a voice recording function now. Um, really great for just making voice notes for yourself if you prefer to record notes, uh, record information that way. But also if you're maybe listening to a lecture and you know it's a lot of verbal information that you want to capture because you're not going to remember it, just set your phone to do it. Um, there's also, if you're a, a training provider, you might want to look at the reasonable adjustments guidance and matrix that is on the Institute for Apprenticeships website, which provides guidance for educator providers and um, endpoint assessment organizations as well. There's plenty of information out there on this topic, so go looking for it. That's great, Lou, thank you so much. And I think um, even going back to those um, those initial sort of free that you gave for advice, I think is is really, really cool for people just to start. Yeah. You know, I think the most important thing here is just to explore and start, isn't it? We've got to be able to support as many people as possible. And the benefits we've seen, previous reels got rolling right, right back, is around those yeah. diverse teams, you know, and having different ways of, uh, of being really productive from an employer perspective. Um, I think it'd be something to be really interesting for people to explore. So thank you for joining us for Real 9. Next week is um, Real 10. And we're going to do a bit of reflection as to what people have fed back on um, on previous um, reels for over the last nine, which would then be 10 weeks. Um, and we're also going to do potentially a bonus um, uh Neurodiverse empowering learner and employment where we can do a little bit of time with uh, you able to ask questions with, with Lou because we've had feedback. People have been really enjoying these reels and keeping it um, nice and chunky, but how can we also maybe unpack those so as we can make it so as everything is deliverable. So thank you so much for joining us for Reel 9. We'll see you next week and thanks for joining us.